Hey everybody, it's the Redstone Wizard here again, bringing you a, another Redstone tutorial. This time, what I got for you is a villager trading hall. This design was originally made by Cass. Of course, I modified it to make it work for Bedrock, so let's uh, take a look. Yep. Nice and clean. All your villagers are standing side by side. You can have... With this specific layout, you can have 45 villagers and they will always be able to be refilled if you do you has two things. One, the villagers will, you either can just kill the villagers or you can uh, send them to the, uh, well, the re-education center. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have any of these actually just, I just locked their trades, locked what they were. So that they're working with this. But yeah, so let's say we look at this guy. He has efficiency 2 and the next one will be loyalty 1. But a decent uh, buff for 1 emerald. This guy has fire protection 3. We can go through and look at every single one. And if we happen to like what they have, we trade with them. And then these buttons here are what is used to send them to the re-education center. And then this bell here is what you use to send them to, well, the happy, oh, happy fun sauce. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, before we go into actually looking at how this actually works in this setup, I have a small little cutout with a uh, villager here. Now let me get a uh, spawn egg. Now as you can see, in fact, pretty much all of them are set up to be like this. So, yeah, this one says uh, there's nothing in there. So let's say we want to si uh, let's say we don't like this guy. <laughs> Let me uh, get in the right spot. As you can see, he just falls in the lava, then dies. Now, I'm gonna put another guy in here if I can. <laughs> They fall down, and they would be able to link with their tr oh, with their. So let's say I do like this guy, but he's a little too expensive. Well, I activate. He falls through without even touching the lava, just like the way uh, Cass from Mizuma Games has his. And then it also resets it so that these activator rails will place them right in there. Now. This is a, this is tileable with two variation with one variation. Down here, if you have a powered rail, the next one has to be an activator rail, and the one above it has to be a powered rail. So the blocks here would change. So if we look at here, as you can see, it is a consistent pattern, and all these are locked, and they will continue doing what they do. No, because they're villagers. Now, if we come down here, as you see, they are all they will all get funneled into a central basin. We have this guy right here to maintain the village. Because he's not a uh, nitwit, I gave him his own job so that he doesn't steal one of theirs. But down here, we have what I like to call the uh, quality control officer. A zombie with a weapon to be able to transform them. They will get pushed. They will stay here until they get turned, and then once they get turned, they'll pop down here. So let's uh, take one of them, and it'll be you. As you can see, they do fall down. He didn't take a single point of damage from the lava. He'll continue going down. He'll hit the magma blocks, which then will soften them up a bit. And he's going to try to fight it, but, well, the water's always going to win. Uh, the chains there are just to, more of to keep them from uh, just sticking around. But here's an issue that I've been having, and it does take them a while to notice them. But once they do, they'll land there, get into the minecart, come all the way up to here, where they'll be popped out. 
and then you ring the bell. They'll give. They'll shoot with a weakness arrow. Give them a golden apple, which is in these droppers here. And all you have to do is wait. Now, the water there is a villager detection. So when the villager is turned, he will automatically rise up and be placed into, let me, yeah, will be placed into this section, which then will lead him all the way back into the farm itself, uh, the trading hall itself. Now this line right here is so that if I want to have more villagers and I have it completely separate because I do not want this to be interfered with by anything that isn't necessary. So that means that you know, those villagers are from a breeder which is outside of the range of this thing. And how you get them in here is up to you. I decided to just minecart them in and then drop them into water. But I could actually just do the same thing and drop them directly there. But, eh, it works. But then, like I said, they go here. And then you'll see that this side is opened up. As you can see, there's dust. The dust is lit. And then it actually lights all of them. But these dust aren't lit because these torches are off. While that one is only. That's why it's a maximum of 15. Is so that we can have it. I got tired of cats running around, so I just stored them all up there. You can have them running around or you can store them, uh, whatever you see fit. But like I said, ah, there he goes. He got revived, and he's going to come. Let's see here. There, yeah, he's landing. And the minecart's going to take him. And we'll just uh, watch right here. Okay, the minecart... Didn't grab him the first time because he's on a slime block and he's bouncing, which is fine. But then he's going to get taken this time and sent all the way over here. And as you can see, he comes out, bam, gets put right in here, and he's back home. Back to uh, back home for his trades. So guys, what do you say? Let's get to building this thing. Alright guys, I'm back. And I'm going to be breaking this up into a couple of parts. First part would be the uh, villager holding cells. And then we will be dealing after that with the, uh, the rejuvenation. And the transport to the system itself. So... With the uh, holding cells, let's take a look at what we got because everything we need is in the shulker box. Now this is per cell. So do not, uh, so how many of our cells you want, <coughs> you'll have to multiply this. And like I said, this is just for the cells. So you're going to need two repeaters, seven solid blocks, one bell, one button of your choice. It doesn't have to be a spruce button. It doesn't have to be a stone button. It's whatever button you like. One dispenser. One bucket of lava. Two pieces of redstone dust. One redstone torch. Seven glass. Your choice of what glass it is. Five redstone blocks. Six observers. One string. Uh, and a total of seven trap doors that can't be lit on fire. So iron and warped uh, or hey, even uh, the nether trees would work. One powered rail, one activator rail, two regular pistons, a redstone lamp, a tra uh, anything that will activate a, uh, an observer. And I forgot one little thing. It's either a sign or a fence gate. So I am going to choose the warped fence gate for this. Let's grab all of this. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to place our fence gate. In fact, actually, we should uh, start out with uh, floor level. So 
this right here is going to be the floor level. This is where you will be standing at. So we need to place a, a uh, observer. Let me. We need two observers crossing each other just like this. We need to throw a bell down so that when we hit it, that observer will be powered. A solid block next to the bell with a button on it. Let me get my button. So when we activate it, the bell will go off, opening the trap door. And then we I'm going to grab the spruce trap door here. Place it here. Now when I activate it, that trap door will open up and close. And the, that one will also. Now we'll throw a solid block here. We will grab our dispenser. And we will place it there. Now, we're going to hold off on the lava. But we're going to temporarily place a block there. Get a non-flammable trap door there. If you're using, uh, and we will have to constantly power it. So redstone blocks, or you can ultimately use a uh, target block. A, uh, why did I put it there? A uh, target block with dust going into it, which means you would need more resources. But that's another way of doing it. We're going to place whatever block you want there. And we will, I'm going to grab my fence gate, throw it here, open it up, take this block out. And we're going to hang off on putting the lava in. Grab your trap doors. And we're going to, one, I'm just putting a path there on the top half with one direction so that when you open it you got a nice clean face take an observer place it on top of this redstone block observing that trap door so that if we hit this the trap door will open and this one will get powered and if i hit this the dispenser will get powered and just to show that i'm going to throw a redstone block in there Power it, and there's the redstone block. Gone. Bye bye. And that will pick up the lava and drop it off. So, from here, any block you want, you can have a light source block. This one is unimportant. This is uh, pure decorative. We're going to place it there. And here we are going to throw a piston. Piston pointing up, temporary block, and I recommend getting a trap door because then we can remove that. And now this does two things. One, zombies can't get in. Baby zombies cannot get in and get to your villagers once you get a workstation in here. And two, if you don't have a workstation in here, your villagers can't leave. So after that, we're going to leave a gap, a one black gap, place another trap door. And this one needs to stay open. And so I'm using iron. I like the look of the iron with this right here. And that's fine. That looks good. And we're going to need our glass. Our tr uh, So we're going to put a glass there. And we're going to go up to and put more to another thing of glass. Okay, on top of here, we're going to put a trap door. Here, on the bottom part of this one, we're going to put a trap door, leaving it closed. And we're going to have another one actually there opened. And on top of this, we're going to put a piece of string. Okay, now we got a cylinder pretty much where the villagers will fall down and land right here. Yep. So now we need the detection. So we're off of the string. We're going to place an observer going from the string, one down, one up, in, both of them into a solid block, 
This solid block will power this trap door, which will open and then close it, allowing the villager to fall through. Your redstone lamp will go right here, which now we pretty much got the front of the build, oh, front of the build done. And it looks nice. Okay, so now, with that done, base around what you're doing. You can throw a activator rail or a powered rail right there, but if you place a powered rail, you have to throw an activator rail here. And then in the next one, we will be throwing a powered rail here and an activator rail there so that they're constantly skipping one which is fine it actually works out pretty well so from here we're going to take two transparent blocks put them there and then one glass two solid blocks Glass here, glass here, solid block here, a repeater, where did I, uh, uh, a repeater, there, with the other piston on the solid block, because now when this gets activated, It pushes it down, and when we hit this button, or even uh, ring the bell, it activates that piston. So as you can see, it's now closed. And keep an eye on that right there. I'm going to ring the bell. There. And now it's open. Close. Oh, it's open. There we go. Now. So let's just uh, close it. Now, we want off of right here to say, okay, we have actually, no, we need right here. One below this redstone block, two blocks up. Any block you want, I'm using glass because I like the look of it. Another repeater. Leave it on default. Going into a solid block. You can, u uh, you can use any block here, except at the very end where you have to use a solid block. So I'm just going to use a solid block. We're going to throw dust on there. And a torch on the one powered by the repeater with a block on top of that and dust on top of that. Now, you continue this 15 times. Now for safety reasons, and I do recommend this for safety reasons, throw a trap door on top of this so that when you, uh, so that while you're trading back here and you lose some items, you don't lose your villager. Now, let's uh, throw this here. Stand here and try. Whoop. Yeah, you will, we will lose your villager if you do the, uh, if you do not put a lid, something covering it up there. And that's the only reason why that trapdoor is there. But you don't have to have a trapdoor if you don't feel like it. And if you don't, Good luck. Hopefully it's a solo server and you're willing to lose some villagers. But yeah. Now, we'll grab our lava. I'm just going to encase this right here. Just for this purpose. Okay. Now, I'm going to throw the lava right here. And then I'm going to come in here. And put in an empty bucket th of the lava I just used. But because I'm in creative, I, I had to 
utilize uh, get into the bucket. But yeah, so if I hit the button, the lava goes away for a moment, and lava comes back. If I hit the bell, the lava doesn't go away. So that's the whole thing about this. And the villagers will fall through and based around which one you select, they will either die or go get re-educated. So I'm going to put this out to 15 and like I have over there. And I'll show you guys, and then we will start working on the, uh, pretty much, the, I'll show you guys the redstone for the conversion chamber. And then we will do the, uh, the, house, the, uh, conver uh, the conversion chamber, the deconversion, uh, the zombie conversion to the, zom uh, to the zombie to villager conversion to the input We'll be doing that one right afterwards, so give me a moment to get the stuff put, uh, get all the stuff for that put together, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back, and in my inventory, I got pretty much all, everything you're going to need for the uh, next part of the build. So let's just take a look. Okay, we're going to need about three redstone blocks, another bell, some more uh, trap doors. Actually, I've already got trap door. Uh, some redstone lamps, water bucket, empty bucket, and it's more of you're going to need water, and an empty bucket that you, with water in it for a bed, and maybe a workstation, depending on the villager you have. If it's a nitwit, you just need the bed. If it's a non-nitwit, you need a workstation with this guy, a bunch of powered rails, a bunch of regular rails. Uh, one activator rail, and uh, that was from when I was uh, completing it. A slime block, sticky piston, two target blocks, a bunch of blocks to build with, two pressure plates, seven repeaters, a uh, couple more actually, two hoppers, redstone, uh, eight redstone torches, a bunch of redstone dust, two dispensers, two droppers. Uh, a chest, uh, a double chest, and I have the this chest filled with uh, weakness arrows. And there's the trap door. So let's uh, go going. So what we got here is the backside, and this one's 15 long. I just put another part just for the ending. So. At the very end, we're going to place a redstone block and a powered rail. Over here, we could just place a normal, uh, a glass block and a powered rail. Now, grab your glass blocks and just start snaking it all the way to your other side. This one will get a powered rail, and we will grab our regular rails. And uh, fill them all in, and then we'll just cover these up with uh, more oh, with glass. And we will put our rail, regular rails here. We'll place uh, that there, and make sure that you cover every place a villager could land on. So I always add an extra line here on this side, and then also you should just. Do the same thing over on this side just so that they don't land on anything that they're not supposed to so they always go to that uh, so they always go to the trap door landing on the trap doors so there's that now we're going to replace this block here with a uh, solid block and we're going to put a glass block up actually we need to move over one one up, over, a uh, solid block, and we're going to power it. I'm going to just power it underneath, and we're going to put powered rails all along there and place a rail afterwards. This will tell us what we need to do right here. If it is like this, we need a repeat, uh, we need a redstone torch, but if it's like this, 
we need a repeater. So we, I know we need a torch. So we're go I'm going to grab the glass blocks and we're just going to go all the way over here. Because I need a torch there, place a torch. If I need a repeater, I place a block here, solid block and repeater and dust all of this. This is a short, this is the shortcut. This is not necessary. This whole line is only required if you just want one section to fill up first instead of filling all the way around, then back all the way around. So then we're going to connect these guys together. So from here, we're going to take and put a block and we're just going to run it all the way along here take a repeater take your repeaters take one place it here you can put a solid block and then dust right here we can place another solid block with uh, another repeater which will power this line also all the way to the very end and that is going to say that this one over here needs villagers and I turned it off and on that's just a signal telling that telling the system to send villagers okay guys now we're up here at the front so what we need to do is go here I'm going to use glass and go down one two three blocks and we're going to place a redstone block there. Grab our power rails, one, two, three. And then we will add two more pieces of glass here, here, and then one here. Glass. Actually, we need to move that uh, redstone block over one. Because we're not, because we have to have this line unpowered. Grab our slime block. Place it here with our pressure plate on top of that. Then we will grab and go down one for the slime block. Go over two. Solid block up one. Another solid block up. Dust here and here. Grab our repeaters. Two repeaters. Going towards the solid block. Both on four ticks with a torch on top of this one and a solid block on top of that now grab yourself another block we're going to go out and then we're just going to climb down grab some dust and go one two three and we'll go up one doesn't have to be a solid block it could be glass put dust on it put a solid block with a torch on there and another block down in line here and just bring it all the way across here we are going to grab our solid block place it here put one up leave a gap put a torch in there grab your dust put it here here and two repeat and two more repeaters both on four ticks this is just going to cause a little delay so that when this comes down and grabs a villager, it doesn't just stop here if it's a solo villager, if it needs a villager. Okay, now we're just going to throw glass on top of those so that we can control it. And we will grab dust, put it there. Grab your target block, put it there with a redstone torch on top of that, on the face of that. Now, under here, we're going to put a glass block next to that we're going to leave a gap and another block we are going to grab our lamps right next to the pressure plate glass and then whatever blocks you want to build with here because it's all up to you pretty much the way i see it from here up is your choice this glass can be a solid block if you want but the reason why I'm not using a solid block is because I want to be able to see if there's actually villagers in here. So we're going to place one there, one there, trap doors. I recommend, and we need to make sure that they will constantly stay open 
Same thing with this one. That's why we're doing a constant power with the redstone blocks. Now we're going to put a block next to the torch. We're going to put another block there. We're going to go to a trap door, put it there. And that's going to be the, when a villager comes in here, they're going to come in, they're going to fall down. And when they stop, if the system says they need villagers, they, you will get villagers. So if I uh, hit this button here, now it's ready to say we need villagers. So if I come down here, pop, as you can see that lamp went off. I step out, that turns off. If I go back in here, lamp, uh, that will turn that off, lamp off. That will allow us to get villagers processing. Okay, so then we'll just go up a couple more blocks here. We will grab a trap door. And this trap door is sole purpose is alignment. So they will always fall and land right there. They will always be pushed towards this side. And then this is where your water will go. Then from here, we're going to go one, and then we're just going to go, we're going to encase this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll go take that one out. And we'll throw a solid block here with a pressure plate on top of that. We'll go out one more and encase this completely. And we will wait to put our water in. Now, I recommend getting tinted glass for anywhere where you are going to have a zombie villager passing underneath. So that they do not get burned if you have it in the open air like this, if you are building it underground, anything to protect the zombie villager. Okay, so from here, we are going to go down a block with a piece of dust there, a your sticky piston right here, redstone block on its feet, on its face and then we're going to go down three blocks dust need a solid block here a target block dust dust torch right here and a solid block here and a torch right here actually we'll throw that torch right there on the back side of that so we've got our uh, so our floor level is right here I'm do just doing this with glass and that's fine so now might actually have to go up some uh, but One block away from here, we are going to throw our activator rail, which is going to be p constantly powered. And then we're just going to staircase down, going all the way to where we have our zombie collection. And we're just going to power it with uh, powered rails. So from here, we're going to grab another solid block, go down three more blocks, place dust, oh, no, need to move it up one, dust, I'm going to throw a torch on that, down two more, with dust on that, 
That should, uh... Because we need to line it up with this. Because they come in from here. Yeah, right there, and then bam, and then regular. Okay, so. We, like I said, we need to set it up so that that gets powered. We can go here, down two, du a torch here, redstone dust here, there. That works too. Okay, so now we're going to grab ourselves a, uh, a dispenser. And now one block above that, we're going to place the dispenser. If you have to, I've noticed that it's better if we move it over one. And underneath that, we will have a dropper going up. And two hoppers going in. And it looks like I have it... Uh, Actually, no, this needs to go down one. <laughs> the drop goes here, dispenser goes here, two hoppers, perfect. We're going to put glass everywhere the zombie villager can uh, pop out at that we don't want around this section. We'll leave that there. Grab yourself an observer. And we're off uh, pointing into this hopper down over and we're going to flip around and oh actually no this i got this wrong yeah okay so we'll hold off on this part and this part here because we're going to utilize this system right here because if we come over here The water is in line with the repeaters, and that's the entrance line. And I actually had these uh, too close, so uh, wizard mistakes. Okay, so yeah, we're going to go dispenser, uh, d uh, dropper, underneath it. Hopper going into the dropper. Only two of them are needed. <coughs> then we are going to take a observer down, ooh, over, flip around to the other side, put one there. We'll take that solid block out. We will add a solid block to here. And this is actually one block away from here, so that's fine. We can adjust it, moving it over this way, but not this way. And like I said, that is fine. And then we will put uh, glass around here. We will grab another dispenser, throw it here, grab your water bucket, throw it in there. Now, I'm going to have to grab myself another water bottle kit for this. <laughs> okay, so now, anywhere that I don't need anything, I'm just going to be placing glass. Because this, unless it's specified, you don't need to use solid blocks. Grab your chest. Put two chests. This is actually, this is a double, so I'll, afterwards I'll relog and I'll be set. Grab yourself another. Uh, grab yourself your other dropper. Place it going up here. Load this up with golden apples. This gets uh, arrows of weakness. This gets golden apples. Same. It's the same chest. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is go over one here and down one. We're gonna bust this out. Make 
block, uh, make a line go here and grab another solid block underneath the dropper. Two, one, two four tick repeaters. Now these repeaters are specifically to give you one apple. <laughs> so over, and then we're going to go up, over, and that is it for that. Grab yourself another repeater, throw it here, leaving it on default, that's fine. We're going to be powering a glass block. This part can actually get moved over one if need be. And that is if we have to have the power, if we have to have the activator rail right there. But it should be fine right there. It's all, it's all in orientation and I recommend running it yourself. So we'll place a redstone torch on top of that. A solid block, a glass block. Grab our target block and we will set it right there with a redstone torch on top of that. I'm just going to break it and replace it to get the water. And then we will dust all, all the way up to there. Grab your bell. You don't have to use a bell, but the bell just works out pretty well. And I'm just going to ring this again just to get that water out. It'll give us an apple, shoot out arrows, and set the up so the zombie can leave. That's fine. Now we're going to, for just, so you don't have to ever get in there. I'm just going to get a trap door, place it right on top, seal this up. Go all the way to the top. This part's your wall. You can make it look however you want. Let me get rid of these. We'll replace that with a uh, solid block and a pressure plate. Now we need, okay, now to prevent us, well, just to make it easier on us, I forgot to mention we should have a sign. Doesn't matter the sign, but we're going to put a sign there. Okay, yep. Yeah. You don't have to put that. I just, uh, I always like having uh, just small little <laughs> reminders and that type of thing. Ooh. That's not supposed to happen. So let me uh, get a sponge. Because what hap what's supposed to happen there is nothing. Okay. All right. So water on every location except for where the sign is and except for where that pressure plate is. And there we go. That's all the water we need. That's going to line it all the way up to there. And anywhere along here, and I do recommend anywhere from this point forward, you, this is where you bring your villagers into the system. And we're just going to cap it completely off. We're going to take a block. We will grab some dust, throw it on there, grab a sticky piston. Let me move that dust again, sticky piston. And we'll place that there, redstone block. Solid block, two blocks down, dust there, solid block, dust, dust. We need to cut that off. If I brought it up uh, this way, like I did over there, it's the same thing. That we need a solid block there. And that just, uh, that did nothing except for a fire that just dropper many times, but that, oh, fired arrows. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now from there, we need 
to take, put a glass block there, and we're going to throw a glass block there for control. We'll grab our activator rails, place it there, and we are just going to go down, staircasing, and this line goes all the way down to where a zombie is at. Then we're going to go down one, two, three blocks. Throw those there. We're going to throw powered rail there, powered rail there. Powered rails all along here. Somewhere around here we need to power this. We could use a redstone block. You could use a solid block to and power that as long as all these get powered. Get a regular rail. Place it there. Then we will grab ourselves a redstone torch, put it here, drop it down, grab some dust, put it on here, redstone torch, drop it down. And if you end up having it where this part works, dust dust. If you, ha if you can't, and if you have to move this over one to make it work, then it would be just this. But since I have it set up here, and the easiest way to test this is to power rails, and it's easy for us to get out because we can uh, <laughs> just use the water and uh, make sure that we have a uh, nice exit. <laughs> And I'm going to break this because I don't want this to activate. Okay, well, now the one thing I did forget is we do need two minecarts. Two plain minecarts. One minecart for right here. The other for right there. So if I stand here and move myself, I am in here. I am now a zombie villager. Rar. So yeah, so that well, so that's what happens. Then they fly up, stand on the pressure plate, activate it, and then they go into the holding cell. Bam, where this will launch, pick up the villager, drop them off into the next available slot, if there is an available slot. Now, you don't have to run it the way I did over here. You do, uh, pretty much what it is, is I ran it down all the way to where I had the zombie, which is encased and can't move. But he, the, And the thing is, he's fixated on that villager. But if a villager comes closer, he gets fixated on them. Get a zombie in there. I'm running one, two, three, four soul sand and a chain. And it gets the villagers nice and ready in there. Three and these are all just water streams with the water in the back half and staircasing down from one spot to the other. This is just there to, if they come in from there, dropping into a three wide with magma cues at the back and every section has a chain with the wall at the edge of the water. It works out great. We have a sign here to prevent the water from flowing down. The sign and villagers will stay up here. You can raise the zombie up one. But don't put him on a slab because he won't work. So now, because I got this over here, I can just push that there. And the system, when it resets, will also send the minecart back down to grab another one. If you have any. If not, they're going to stay there. For this, I have two. You don't have to have two there, but I feel like it, it makes me feel better. Then we have glass surrounding it. We have a pressure plate, solid block, eight ticks worth of repeaters, which are powering the block next to the uh, the uh, <laughs> powering the powered rail next to the block, which will hold the zombies. So, and then, like I said, you just bring your villagers in, however you see fit. 
and have your, you can have your cats in there just to prevent your cats from uh, yeah, you could literally decorate this out however you want now when it comes to uh, but your first villager you will uh, it should be one that you'll never have to deal with this guy I don't want to ever deal with him, so I just locked his trade and did it a little more just because. And then it's like, you know, I'm moving you in here. So you lock them, you know, you put them in here with a bed. If they are a non nitwit, you put a workstation. You put it where you don't have to see them, they will always be right there. So, and this button, like I said, this button is just all the way over there to get a villager. And like I said, you set it up however you want to get your villagers in. Now these lights here, this bottom one says you have villagers in here waiting. This top one says the minecart is out. So this could be off and this could be on. This just, like I said, this says the minecart's out. This says there's villagers waiting. And the only time the minecart goes out is if there's something there. Because if I push this, signaling I actually don't down here, signaling I want a villager, it will not give me anything for it because this isn't on. But as you see, the minecart's out. That light's on and I have villagers. So that minecart is now lost to the void. Yay! <laughs> but yeah. So, oh, no, it went, uh, oh, yeah, the one other little thing I forgot to mention is right along this wall, I recommend getting yourself some trap doors and just stack them because let me activate this again. Because just for safety reasons, and so the minecart doesn't just fly off everywhere, it drops right down where we want it, and we need that two block gap where you place it and how you place it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down in the comment section. If it's a major issue, I recommend joining my Discord. A world download will be available in my Discord. <clears throat> if you want to support me, subscribe and join my Patreon. The link to that will be in the description. But you guys, this is the Redstone Wizard. Enjoy building. <laughs>